Good evening. You're watching the news at 7:30 on ATV. I'm Wen Wang, and I'm Raymond Yang. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Cafe pilot arrested at Heathrow Airport for carrying knives. Former executive counselor Barry Chung in court facing non-payment of wages charge. At least one person dead as earthquakes rock Taiwan and Japan. A Cathay Pacific pilot was arrested at London's Heathrow Airport on Saturday for allegedly carrying knives in his left hand luggage. He was released on bail, and the flight was delayed, eventually taking off yesterday. According to London's Metropolitan Police, officers at Heathrow Airport were called into a staff search area at around nine o'clock on Saturday night. A pilot for Cathay Pacific was found to have some knives and was subsequently arrested on suspicion of possessing an offensive weapon and possession of a knife blade or sharp pointed article in a public place. The male pilot was later released on bail and is required to return in May for further investigations. According to a Cathay spokesperson, the pilot. Was meant to be part of the 18th of April CX254 crew flying from London to Hong Kong. It was meant to take off at around 10 p.m., carrying 262 passengers. The airline arranged for affected passengers to stay in hotels. The flight subsequently took off yesterday afternoon and arrived safely in Hong Kong this morning. According to a Cathay employee, pilots who fly the London to Hong Kong route are mostly British. More details were revealed today about the financial troubles of former executive counselor Barry Chung, who pleaded guilty to not paying a former employee wages. The court has adjourned sentencing to Thursday as Chung tries to avoid a jail term of community service. Barry Chung made his first appearance in nearly four weeks today when he arrived at Kowloon City Law Court this morning. The former executive counselor had previously admitted to two charges of failing to pay $340,000 of wages to a former employee of the Hong Kong Mercantile Exchange, which dissolved in 2013. Magistrate Veronica Hung asked how Chung, who is now bankrupt, was able to stay at his luxury Repulse Bay flat, which cost $160,000 a month to rent. Chung replied that the rents were paid by his wife and her family. Adding, he moved to Happy Valley last month. Through his lawyer, Cheng said he acted in goodwill by injecting over six hundred million dollars into HKMX since 2010. Asked why the funds were not used to pay wages instead, the lawyer replied, "It's a case of the chicken or the egg," insisting Cheng never tried to cheat his employees. The funds were eventually used up in 2013 when the exchange's license was revoked. Describing his client as a responsible man, Chang's lawyer said he is willing to serve 240 hours of community service. The judge adjourned sentencing to Thursday, and a bail application was granted. Once the top eight of Chief Executive Luan Chunying, Chang was declared bankrupt last week with debts of over 116 million dollars. He denied Luan had given him financial assistance outside court today. Lashko's president has rejected the majority of the amendments submitted by opposition lawmakers who are trying to filibuster the budget debate. Zhang Yuxing says 618 amendments have been given the green light for debate, which starts on Wednesday. That's down from 3,904 submissions proposed by the Pan Democratic camp. All the rejected amendments were from radical lawmaker Liang Kuohong. Zhang explained most of them were trivial and meaningless. He hopes the budget debate will be completed by early June. The government should sit down with the Democratic camp to iron out their differences on political reform, according to the Lechko chief. Zhang Yuxing believes both sides have a genuine wish to achieve universal suffrage. No room. Chief Secretary Carrie Lam began a series of meetings with Pan Democratic lawmakers last week, widely seen as an attempt to gather support for the government's final political reform package, which will be unveiled on Wednesday. But so far, the talks have had little success. With most Democrats saying Lam did nothing more than repeat the official line that the election model will stick to Beijing's tight framework laid down last year. Earlier today, Lechko President Zhang Yuxing said he feels both sides have wrongly put their focus on rallying for public support. If in the next couple of months the government goes out to try to、um, win the support. 
of a majority of Hong Kong people for the government proposal, whereas the pan-democrats try to fight against that through their um, popular campaign, then neither side would have the intention to communicate with each other and try to work out a solution acceptable to everybody. It, it, we won't possibly arrive at a win-win situation. He shared his words of wisdom to end the reform deadlock. Both sides should make the best of their efforts to sit down and talk, to work out a consensus. Everyone can see the wide gap now existing, but at the same time, I believe there's a genuine wish on both sides to see the chief executive elected by universal suffrage in 2017. This should be the common ground on which all the parties um, um, should build um, their consensus. ATV still has not decided whether it wants to rent out its airwaves to HKTV and the deadline on the offer passed a few hours ago. I think we need to know more details about the um, proposal. Uh, so I will discuss with Mr. Wang Weiji uh, as soon as possible. Uh, we still will consider the proposal uh, after our discussions. Last week, HKTV made a public proposal to ATV, suggesting it could rent the troubled broadcaster's airwaves to show HKTV dramas and variety programs. HKTV promised to pay $5 million per month, and the deadline for accepting the offer was 5 p.m. today. Although the offer was made a week ago, it said ATV's board of directors only gave him permission to talk to HKTV boss Ricky Wong this morning. President Xi Jinping arrived in Pakistan today for a two-day visit. He's expected to sign a huge 46 billion U.S. dollar investment deal. Joyce Wu reports. In a highly anticipated trip where he's expected to announce investment worth 46 billion U.S. dollars, President Xi Jinping touched down in Pakistan today for a two-day visit. Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif and the country's top civilian and military leaders received Xi at an air force base near the capital, Islamabad. The focus of the spending will be on building a China-Pakistan economic corridor, a network of roads, railways and pipelines connecting the two countries. The projects will give China direct access to the Indian Ocean and beyond and shorten oil and gas import routes from Africa and the Middle East by thousands of kilometers. This marks a major advance in China's plans to boost its economic influence in Central and South Asia. China has become Pakistan's largest trading partner, with two-way trading exceeding 16 billion U.S. dollars last year. China and Pakistan have long maintained close relations, but she postponed a visit to Islamabad last year due to anti-government protests and went ahead with a visit to India. Joyce Wu, ATV News. There was a 6.3 magnitude earthquake along eastern parts of Taiwan this morning, and strong tremors could be felt across the entire island. Japan was also affected with a 6.8 magnitude quake shaking Okinawa. The earthquake shook Taiwan at around 9.45 a.m., shortly after people had arrived at work. According to Chief of Taiwan's Central Weather Bureau, Guo Kai-wen, the 6.3 magnitude earthquake came from the sea around 76 kilometers east of Hualien County. The quake was at a depth of 17.5 kilometers, which is considered shallow. A 5.0 magnitude aftershock was detected just minutes after. The earthquake triggered an electrical explosion at a flat in New Taipei. The fire that followed killed at least one person. Over in Japan, Okinawa also felt a 6.8 magnitude quake. The Japanese observatory issued tsunami warnings for Miyakojima and Yaeyama areas and called on the public to stay away from the coast. The warning was later cancelled. Students in Cairo clashed with police overnight at a protest against the trial of ousted President Mohamed Morsi. But first in our international roundup, the Philippines has called on China to stop its reclamation activities in the South China Sea. Joshua reports. 
The Philippines said today that China's land reclamation in a disputed part of the South China Sea will cause tension in the region and called for them to stop. We call on China to stop the reclamation activities and to be mindful of its responsibilities as a claimant state and an important member of the international community. Recent satellite images suggest China has made rapid progress in building an airstrip in the Spratly Islands and may be planning another. It's worrisome because uh, what's the purpose of this? Some countries have reclaimed areas, but that, not that big. At the same time, Philippine and U.S. soldiers today began their biggest combined military exercise in 15 years. Pro-Muslim Brotherhood students from Cairo University clashed with police as they protested against last week's trial of ousted President Mohamed Mercy. The protesters, who call themselves Students Against Coup, were seen running and throwing stones as plain-clothed security officers chased them. Mercy was ousted by former Army Chief Abdel Fattah al-Sisi in July 2013, one year after he took office, after mass protests against his rule. About a hundred Syrian migrants rescued by the Italian Coast Guard off Sicily have been taken to the town of Puzalo. The migrants, 13 of whom were children, had left Syria via Turkey. The latest operation came as a smuggler's boat crammed with hundreds of people overturned off Libya's coast as rescuers approached, causing what could be the Mediterranean's deadliest known migrant tragedy.